Thank you, each one of you for taking time to appear today. Uh, Mr. Ueda and Ms. Pierce, would y'all like to respond to um, the good lady from Georgia in the comments from Mr. Gensler on capital formation for underserved markets and I guess in underserved um, areas of the country? I think it is a very, very significant problem. In fact, our Office of Small Business Capital Formation just issued a report. 78% of all small business owners said they have problems finding capital. Uh, we need to make sure that we've got capital formation on our agenda and we're thinking about how to provide that capital to those new entrepreneurs and innovators. By saying a shortage of capital, what's causing that and how are you going to fix it? We have a very complicated system for raising capital, both on the equity and debt side. What has powered uh, our, our markets has been the fact that we can raise equity capital. However, there are a lot of um, traps for the unwary and footfalls in our complicated capital raising system. We do not, you, you shouldn't have a system where there's $1,000 an hour lawyers that you need to consult before you can raise say, a million and a half in equity capital. That's outrageous. How do you fix that? How can we nix that? Well, we can simplify a lot of things. We have a very basic rule, which is when raising money, don't lie, cheat, or steal. For many of these small offerings, I think that's the only rule you need. How do you enforce that? We have an enforcement division, and we routinely take enforcement actions against those who misappropriate funds uh, in, in a securities offering, or who lie about their financial status, or who have false and misleading um, uh, projections. But how do you get, how do you curb back the thousand dollar per hour lawyers to cut that, to cut that out? That's not making a loan, that's not making capital available. Now I guess they've got the expertise, but that's one good example of a cure that needs to be found. Yeah, it, it, it's simplifying our, our rule book to make it very easy for a knowledgeable, uh, well-intended entrepreneur to be able to follow the rule without having to hire the $1,000 an hour lawyer. Ms. Pierce, do you have any comment? Yeah, I mean, I think there are a couple concrete proposals in addition to the simplification. We could work on finders uh, regulations. We could work on a micro-offering exemption, which would be just a paired back. You can raise $500,000 with no strings attached, except for don't lie, cheat, or steal. Um, and we could, work on expanding the accredited investor definition so that it doesn't turn only on how wealthy you are, which I think has been a real problem um, for people who don't have a lot of rich friends. They can't find someone to invest, and so there are other ways we could expand the accredited investor definition. You may want to follow that. Don't lie, cheat or steal for Congress, too, which is kind of a tall order. Um, Mr. Gendron, I was just looking over um, you know, some of the statistics, the first 30 months of your tenure, you proposed 52 new rules. By contrast, Chairs Clayton and White proposed 35 and 28 new rules over the same period. Less than a fifth of the proposals are tied to any statute or any type mandate. Can you address this? Um, I can get specific, more sp specific if you need me to. No, that's good. I mean, we've adopted 42 rules. I think Chair Clayton did about 60 or 65 in his four years. So, uh, but I'm about I do, to 30 months. I'm talking about the 30 months. No, no, I understand. But I think that it's really important that we have had uh, success updating our rules around corporate governance, that uh, insiders now, if they want to sell their securities, have to wait three months and have a plan in place so that they're not trading on inside information. I think it's really important that we updated our rules to if you sell your securities on a Monday, you get your cash on a Tuesday, you don't have to wait two days. I think it's important that we updated our rules that you get a privacy notice if your broker dealer or investment advisor gets hacked and your PII is stolen that for the first time we'll have a federal standard to, that in, investors get that information. Um, I'm very proud of the record that what, what we've well, let accomplished. Me Chairman McHenry mentioned, you know, letters have been sent from this committee and others, a lot of letters, and uh, particularly on the uh, SEC proposal on the PDAs, the predictive data anal analytics. We've yet to hear an answer back about 
How is that protecting the investor? And I've got four seconds, but. I think it does because there can be an inherent conflict. You need to put the investor ahead of the investment advisor and not the other way around. Thank you. I yield back.